Hello everyone. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different because the power supply on my desktop is fried so I can't record any Rails content. In the background you'll see me trying to install Rails on a fresh Ubuntu WSL installation because we still can't install Rails on Windows, at least not smoothly. In the foreground, you'll listen to me talk about, I don't know, some problems I've seen with the Rails community ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, and sort of what I think the solution is. So this conversation has been going on for a little bit now. It happens on Reddit occasionally when I can make it through one or two posts without wanting to just Alt F4 and never open the app again. And it happens on Twitter and other places as well, where people are making these comments about how Rails has a junior developer issue, and that's why the framework has been in decline. And even on the surface, that doesn't make a lot of sense because generally the, the framework goes into decline and then junior developers or new developers stop trying to pick up the framework because it's not the cool thing to learn because it's in decline. You don't go into decline because all the junior developers packed up and left, right? That really doesn't make a lot of sense. But okay, let's say it has a junior developer issue. It goes without saying, right? The, the YouTube channel here grows at like 400 subscribers a month. Uh, if I was covering content for other frameworks or languages, even P5.js, this obscure JavaScript framework, it got like 2,000 views on a video. Like my channel would be growing at, at thousands of subscribers per, per month if I did content on a different programming language. So that just sort of gives you a perspective for where Rails is at. And we see this with like the developer surveys. It's, it's not one of the top frameworks right now. And that really shouldn't be insulting. <laughs> I don't know why people could get so defensive over this. It's just the way it is, right? Like you're not going to sit there and say JavaScript bad, Rails good to make Rails more popular than React or like the Mern stack. It's just not how that works. You're not going to say Python is speed testing better than, than or Ruby speed testing better than Python. Therefore, stop using Python to go make machine learning algorithms or whatever. But um, the the underlying issue that people like to point to is Rails has a junior developer problem, and it's an issue with companies not hiring junior developers for Rails. And anecdotally, I can tell you that my email inbox is spammed with a whole bunch of senior developer recruitments for Rails. That doesn't really surprise me, though, because as the framework goes into decline, it becomes a more desirable skill because newer people are less likely to pick it up. That's not a slight against Rails. That's just the state of things. And I don't think it's helpful to blame companies for trying to hire senior developers because... At the end of the day, they're trying to make money, just like all of us when we watch these tutorials and hope to go start our own company, for those of you that are into that. Um, you're going to run into that same problem where the like acknowledged industry state of things is you'll lose money for like three to six months, I think, uh, worth of a developer's salary when you hire a junior developer. So people expect to lose money the first year that they hire a junior developer. And then they run into the, the problem, the wall, which is they hire a junior developer and then the junior developer works there for a year. And then they're like, okay, cool. Now we're not going to lose money on this, this lady for the next year. So we're set. But then the lady goes, okay, where's my raise? And they go, all right, here's your like below inflation raise. And then she gets offers in her email inbox where she started at 60,000 a year or something. And now she's getting offers for 120,000 a year because competitors are just like, oh man, a, a fully trained mid-level developer-ish with a year worth of experience. Uh, I want that. I don't have to worry about that, that loss as much with this hire. So she leaves and the company goes, see, that's why we don't hire junior developers. And that, that really annoys me because it, the, the solution there is to just increase the salary enough so it's competitive. And a lot of places don't do that. I know at like Google or Facebook, you're not going to run into that as much. Uh, I mean, right now you're not going to get hired there at all because they're in a hiring freeze and they're probably going to end up pruning people soon. But the, the overall issue is they hire the person, they pay her a maybe competitive junior salary 
for the first year. I'm not saying 60,000 is competitive. It isn't by any stretch of the imagination around where I live anyways. Um, but then they don't increase the pay enough. You know, they increase the pay to maybe 80,000 a year after the, the first year. And then the person just leaves because there's better offers on the table. So that is an issue. And Rails is going to run into that more than other frameworks because you hire a JavaScript developer for 60 a year, and then you try to hire a junior Rails developer for 120 a year, and people still laugh at you because it's more in demand. So there's fewer people going into it. But that isn't really actionable. And it's taken me f six minutes to get to this, but blaming the companies for not hiring more junior developers, that's not entirely actionable. We can, tr we can complain on Twitter. We can go to work if we work at a Rails company. I don't, but maybe someone watching this does. You can go to your boss or maybe you are the boss and you can say, all right, I'm gonna hire more junior developers. Or you can go to your boss and you can say, hire more junior developers. We need to get more fresh blood in here. But for the vast majority of people watching this, it's not actionable. Actionable stuff is the other part of the issue, which is how do you get into the Rails ecosystem? Well, we can start from the beginning. Let's try to install Rails on Windows. And once you've finished laughing at that proposition because it's impossible to do so, you're going to go, okay, maybe we try installing Rails on Linux. I don't want to set up a separate Linux box, so I'm going to set up WSL2. Okay, so for my first barrier for entry for a junior developer is to go set up WSL2. Now, that is something I have to do with other frameworks and languages, sure, but that's already kind of above what the average beginner developer is comfortable doing. The average beginner developer has a problem setting up Java if it doesn't add the path, the class path, to the uh, computer's path, right? If, it, if they have to go in and click the little manage my computer environment and variables buttons and then add in the path to the Java bin, you're already losing quite a few junior devs. For Rails, you're setting up WSL and that process has been simplified recently by Microsoft, but it's a lot to take in for someone who's not familiar with it. And you can make the argument that you should at least know a programming language before you start with Rails, but I'm not gonna have as much of an issue if I try to do that with, I don't know, say JavaScript, right? Like I don't have to go out and set up NPM on uh, WSL instance. It makes it easier to develop, but I've done it on Windows before, it was no big deal. If I set up like .NET, I mean, that's just a installer, right? So that's not even a good example. Unlike the Rails installer, it actually works. So let's look at the Linux side of things. I've installed Rails probably a dozen times at this point on multiple different systems, and I still have no idea what I'm doing. I go to the RVM page to install it every single time because I like to use RVM, and every single time there's a new dependency that doesn't work, so I have to go you know, through the whole dependency loop to figure out what's broken. This installation this time took me over an hour because OpenSSL wasn't bundled with anything. So I had to learn that the hard way by looking at the make file, something a junior developer is going to be totally comfortable doing. And then after I figured out OpenSSL wasn't bundled with it, there were other dependencies I had to add and a whole bunch of other setup that I went through until eventually I had a working Rails installation on my laptop because I don't have a power supply on my main computer. That shouldn't have taken me an hour. It really shouldn't. There's no reason for that. That's something where it's an action, actionable thing that we can work on because, I mean, it's open source, right? So you go to one of these repositories, you pick something that you think you can help with, and you go help with that. Maybe you can't help with that, though. You can go write a blog post. You can set up like a virtual machine and step through the process of trying to install rails on it or maybe you go to like digital ocean spin up a droplet and you walk through those steps and you write an article that's something that not that many people in the rails community do like for some reason tutorials in rails are they ultimately boil down to a couple really educated blog writers and then on youtube who make videos right like it's chris from go rails it's i don't know yaroslav from super rails and then it's dinan yelling at a computer screen right that's 
that's the YouTube stack. There's really not a big ecosystem for learning Rails, especially not up-to-date tutorials, to the point where some of the most popular videos are probably still like McKinsey Child's 12 and 12 challenge from when like Rails 3 was a thing and you tried to use Rails 4 with it and then some of it was already outdated. Imagine trying to use that now. It's, it's so inconvenient for a new developer to learn because so many things change. My Rails 6 tutorials are outdated because they moved over to import maps and, and stimulus. So now all of the JavaScript stuff with the ERBs, the JS.ERBs, that's all outdated. So I get these comments on like the restaurant freelance application or like the shopping cart where it just doesn't work anymore because all the JavaScript's outdated because Rails has like this weird obsession with reinventing the JavaScript wheel every major release. And that's fine if there's people that make updated tutorials, but even at making three videos a week, there's like a whole backlog of 30 or 40 videos that I haven't covered yet because I just can't. And then that's like only the stuff I think about. That's not even getting to all the suggestions I get and all the requests where it's not feasible for one person to cover this. And I understand this is like creating competitors to the channel, but just between you, me, and everyone else watching this, like my plan is to move on from Rails at some point. But the reason why I don't is because I feel obligated to keep making videos because there's only like three people making videos on Rails. Personally, I'd like to like move on to JavaScript or tech or whatever, just generalized stuff to reach a wider audience. But I can't because every time I try, I just sit here and I'm like, well, someone's got to talk about Rails. I'm not going to abandon everyone. So I'm going to go make another video. And like blogs are in a similar boat. And it's really frustrating to have people say, just go read the documentation to every beginner that posts on Reddit about how to learn Rails. Because not everyone reads documentation to learn a language, especially not beginners, right? Like, I don't know about you, but when I started learning how to code, I definitely avoided documentation like the plague. And I went, okay, let's go watch a YouTube guy explain it to me because I don't even know how to install the thing. I'm not going to go look at like the, the stimulus section of like some random website that does the edge guide links to or the action cable component because I understand that I need WebSockets to make real time communication work. Like even conceptually, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So then people talk about the same three or four courses where they're like, go watch the the Ruby for for Rubyers course or go read this book or something. And that's just not, it's not how people learn. It's not how everyone learns, at least. Some people like reading books, that's fine. But unless you guys are willing to go read books, I don't think that's actionable. I think what's actionable is you're learning how to, to learn Rails. And along the way, you say, I'm going to write some blog posts. I'm going to write like one blog post a week uh, because I want to pad my resume with technical articles that I can then point to. Right? Like that's good for you. It gives you technical stuff to point to in an interview for a Rails position where you can say, I have written about this stuff. Or you make YouTube tutorials. You point to it and you say, I have made videos about this stuff. So the main reason I got hired at my last job, main reason I got promoted in the first year to like a product manager position was because they liked my soft skills, my ability to make these videos and talk to everyone. That's good. It's not great that like the responsibility is on you to keep the community alive, but I really don't have a better solution. I think this is a more realistic solution than to just complain on like Twitter or Reddit that companies don't hire junior developers. Um, eventually they're gonna have to, uh, but in the meantime, the best thing we can probably do is try and make it easier for other junior developers or other new people to learn the tool. And the only way that's gonna happen is if we have more people making educational content. So I don't know what entirely the solution is. I think this is a good actionable way to do it though. So if, if you guys want like a tutorial on making tutorials, then let me know and I can, I can make that like a video series or something like how to make rails tutorials. I can step you through how to write your blog. If you need to, how to set up a blog, I can step you through how to record videos. I mean, you could even use like medium and write medium articles or something. Just try not to put stuff behind too much of a paywall because again, we're trying to make it accessible for people. 
But of course, you also want to earn your money. I get that. I respect that. But I don't know. Just let me know what you think down below in the comments. It went on a bit of a rant here, but it's just been frustrating me. And in the background, you can hopefully see uh, eventually I get the <laughs> the Rails installation up and running on this laptop. Um, yeah, I think the last time I used this was like when I recorded the first two or three videos on it. So yeah, it really shouldn't have taken me over an hour to install, but that's just, I guess, the state of things right now. Um, yeah, let me know if, if you want some resources on how to learn to teach Rails or something, then I, I can do that. Or maybe you think this idea is dumb. I don't know. I don't have a power supply though, so this is the best I could do for today. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys on Monday with my computer fixed and a regular tutorial. Uh, or it turns out it's more than my power supply that's fried and my whole motherboard and everything else is toast in which case i'm probably gonna be crying and i really don't know what i'm gonna do at that point so hopefully you just see a regular tutorial on monday um but yeah this is gonna do it for me uh, thanks for watching slash listening and uh let me know what you think down below